video F2, help with doing some division without remainders using a couple different techniques. So I've got 18 divided by 6. One technique that I could use would be to make an area array model. So I'm going to count over here and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm going to keep putting another row of 6 until I get up to 18. So my 6 came from right here. So my width basically is 6. I'm going to make another row. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Make another row. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I'm now to 18. My area is 18. The top was 6. The side is 3. So 18 divided by 6 equals 3. Another way I could do this is to divide it up into bags using a picture. So I got 24 divided by 4. 24 pieces of candy. Four people want it. So I'm going to give them four bags. And then I just start passing the candy out one piece at a time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So each bag got 6, so 24 divided by 4 equals 6. Another way I can do this is to use multiples. I just count by threes. I go 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. I really didn't sing that with the song, did I? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. There we go. I'm trying to get to 24, so how many threes was that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 24 divided by 3 equals 8. So that's another method that I could do. Um, 40 divided by 5, nice and simple. I'm going to count by 5s till I get to 40. You know, and I could, since I can count by 5s very simple, I may just do this. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, boom, 8. Now, if I could count by 6s that easy, I would probably do 6s that way. Since I can't do that, I can also do this. 24 divided by 6, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in a row. And then I'm going to go make my next row the same thing with 6 until I get to 24. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. How many stacks of 6 did I make? 4. Uh, one way that's not the favorite of most people is repeated subtraction. That means I'm going to keep subtracting 7 from 42 until I get to 0. So 42 minus 7. Gonna have to do some borrowing. I'm at 35. Subtract 7 again. More borrowing. I'm at 28. Hey, this time I don't have to borrow. I'm at 21. Borrowing again. I'm now at 14. One more time of borrowing. I'm at 7. And then I just subtract 7. I get to 0. The tricky part of this is do not count this 7 right here. We're only going to count times when we subtract it 7 because we're doing repeated subtraction. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We took off 6 7s to get to 42. Let's move ahead a little bit. I just want to show you what happens when you're dividing with 1 and 0. 18 divided by 1. Anytime I divide by 1, I get the same number that was the other number. If I divide a number by the same number, I'm going to get 1. You know, so like if I came in and went 7 divided by 7, 1. Here's a tricky one. 18 divided by 0 is something called undefined. I know in your head right away you wanted to say 0, but it's undefined. So think of this. If I had 18 divided by 0 equals the box, then when I switch this around to a family of facts, I would have the box times 0 equals 18. Well, what can you multiply times 0 to get to 18? Because anything times 0 is 0. So it's impossible. It doesn't work. It's sort of like I'm trying to take these 18 pieces of candy and put them in no groups. But they're already there, so I don't know how you don't put them in groups. This problem, on the other hand, is very easy. I don't have anything. It doesn't matter how you split it up. As many people as you want to split it with, it's 0. All right, let's try out the box it up, bring it up method. It's sort of like standard algorithm, but with just a little bit of a twist. So right here, I'm writing my 34. 
notice I put them in my boxes on so my here's my tens box here's my ones box and I put it over in the right corner divided by two so now I want to know how many twos are in three without going over you know and if I start counting two four well, I'm already over so it's just gonna be one two I'm gonna multiply this one times two which equals two subtract I get a one I'm going to bring that 110 up in front here, and it has 14. People with the standard algorithm know we normally bring the 4 down. I'll show you that in a day or two. So now I have 14 pieces of candy in this box, and two people still want it. So I'm going to keep counting. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 people take this 7 times the 2 is 14, and there's nothing left. So 34 divided by 2 equals 17. Let's try it with a slightly bigger number here. So this time I'm going to hundreds, so I'm going to have three boxes for my three places, my hundreds, my tens, and my ones. But I'm doing the same kind of thing. Dividing by 5, how many 5's in 7? Just 1. 1 times 5 equals 5. I subtract, I got a 2. Bring it up, now I got a 28. How many 5's in 28 without going over? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Oh, 30 would be too much, so I'm going to stop right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them. 4, 25. Subtract, I got a 3. Bring it up. How many 5s in 35? Well, we were almost there. So now we're here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And 7 times 5 is 35. Subtract, there's nothing left. So 785 divided by 5 equals 157. Box it up, bring it up. Works a lot like the standard algorithm, except I'm bringing stuff up instead of down. Let's try a partial quotient one for you. Okay, so actually I want bigger numbers. I got 140 divided by 5. So even when I set the problem up, it looks a little bit different. So I'm going to take this line and put it way down through here. Because this separates where I'm doing my subtraction work and the things where I'm doing my partial quotients. So when I do partial quotients, here are my choices. First, I'm going to try to see if I can do 100. This is sort of like when you have a giant bag of candy. And instead of going around giving everybody one, and then one, and then one, you look in the bag and you go, man, I know I can give everybody 10. Or I know I can give everybody 50 pieces. And I'm still going to have candy left over. So we're going to try for 100, and if 100 doesn't work, then we're going for 10, and then we could go for 5, and then we'll see what we need to do afterwards. So could I do 100 fives in 140? No, nope, because 100 times 5 would be 500. Too much. Can I do 10? Yeah, because 10 times 5 equals 50. So if I gave all 5 people 10, that would be 50 off, and now I'm at 90 still left in my bag. You know what? I can do the same thing again. I'm going to give another 10 to the 5 people, which would be 50. And now I'm at 40. Hmm. I can't give another 10. But since this is a 5, I know there's some people who know 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. I could give 8 more pieces to each one. And that would get rid of the 40. And I have nothing left. And then I just add these numbers here. So 10 plus 10 plus 8, 10 is 8. 28. Partial quotients. This is sort of like what you would do in your head most of the time. Try another one. 84 divided by 7. It's pretty much the same thing. I want to, can't, there's no way I can do 100 because I'm not even to 100. Can I do 10 sevens? Oh, absolutely. And 10 times 7 is 70. I subtract. I'm at 14. How many sevens in 14? Well, 2 times 7 equals 14. So there's my 2. I subtract and I'm done. 10 plus 2 gets me a 12.